Guys, it's been four days since I cooked that turkey and it's still feeding my family. Horns up and welcome to Headbangers Kitchen. And this, my friends, is part two of my $100 turkey series. Yep, I paid $100 for a $10 butterball turkey. And in the last episode, I basically prepped it. I explained why it costs $100 and all the other information you would want to have. So click here on the i button and watch that video first if you haven't. Today's video is about cooking the second half of the turkey. So I cooked half of the turkey using a wet brine and the other half I dry brined. So today I'm going to cook the dry brined turkey. But anyway, enough jibber jabber, let's get cooking. So to make my dry brine, I actually just used some salt, sea salt, some pepper, a little bit of nutmeg powder, some dried sage and a mixed dried herbs that I had lying at home, which was basically thyme, rosemary, oregano and basil. And that's how I made the dry rub. Uh, like I mentioned before, I kind of cook by feel, so I didn't really measure anything out. I just eyeballed it. But I'll kind of come up with some proper measurements and put them on the blog post. You'll find the link just below this video. Anyway, enough jibber jabber. Let's cook that turkey. So before I do anything, I'm going to preheat my oven to 220 degrees Celsius. Now if you look at the dry brined bird, you can see that the skin has tightened up and it's kind of dried out from being in the fridge overnight and because of the salt on the skin. And that's what's going to give us a crispier skin. Also, it's very important to let this come to room temperature before cooking it. That way it's going to cook much more evenly and you're going to get a perfectly cooked bird. Now just like the wet brine, I decided to separate the drum from the thigh for quicker cooking. And honestly, butchering this was fun and it was easy because it's such a big bird. I also separated the breast tenderloin as I cook that separately and I basically eat it like a snack. And also if I leave it on the breast, it will definitely overcook. To cook the bird, I get my pan on the stove and I heat up some oil. And once that oil is nice and hot, in goes the thigh, the drum and the wing. Now I'm going to get some color on this bird before I pop it in the oven to finish cooking. So I flip those pieces after a few minutes and they have some lovely color on them. And honestly, I wanted to cook this exactly how I cooked the wet brine turkey so that I can make a proper comparison between the two. Anyway, after about a minute on the flesh side, I remove the pieces and I put them on my roasting tray and then into the oven they go. Then in the same pan, which is nice and hot, I place the turkey breast, skin side down and also that little turkey tenderloin. I keep my eye on it and you'll see the pink flesh start to turn white as it cooks. Now I cook completely by intuition so I just turn the tender and let it finish cooking. I do however check the temperature with the thermometer and take it off when it's just a few degrees shy of the recommended temperature as it will continue to cook as it rests. And just look at that color. Perfection. Anyway by now it's time to turn that breast over and OMG that's some food porn right there. The skin looks beautiful and golden and caramelized and just gorgeous. Absolutely stoked with how that's looking. I just need a moment to appreciate that skin. Oh man that looks good. Anyway then that breast will go and join the other body parts of the bird in the oven and continue to cook till it reaches the perfect internal temperature. I'll put all these details on the blog post on headbangerskitchen.com. Now while the bird's cooking, it's time to cut the tenderloin and while that looks great, I was just getting the feeling that it was a tad undercooked. And just to be safe, I popped it back onto the pan for a little more time to finish cooking. That's the beauty of white meat. It cooks really quickly. So just a little more heat and it's done to perfection. And this time, I'm sure. Just look at that perfectly cooked white meat. Anyway, time for a snack. Hey guys, so while I was waiting for that turkey to finish cooking, I thought I would taste the tender. And it looked a bit under visually, so I did put it back in the pan as you saw. But I think it's pretty much cooked all the way through. And yeah, I'm going to dig in now. 
Mm. I so I don't know if I'm accurate, but I definitely feel that the texture of the brined version is different to this. Um, that was definitely more, I would say, juicy on the mouthful. But I actually do like this texture of the unbrined turkey as well. It's by no means tough. It's not tough at all. It just feels less watery, if you know what I mean. Like, it's it's got bite like you would normally get from a bird. But that sort of briny juiciness is not there. Which, again, they seem like two very separate things. Yeah, like it's moist, it's tender. But it's not like juicy, juicy like I've got juices running down the turkey. You know what I'm saying? Like yesterday's wet brine turkey, when I squeezed it, there was actually proper juice coming out. And here, it's just flaking apart beautifully, but it's still moist, but it's not juicy. I don't know if that makes sense. Anyway, let's get back to cooking this turkey. Now it's time to check in on the turkey in the oven. And the breast is at around 70 degrees Celsius, which is just right. So it's time to get that out of the oven and let it rest. The rest of the bird will take a bit longer to cook as dark meat always does. So I let it cook till the thigh is at about 80 to 82 degrees Celsius. And then I remove that along with the wing and the leg continues to cook for a little more time. Once the leg reaches the same temperature, I remove that from the oven and let the body parts rest. Rest easy dear bird. Or should it be dead bird? Rest easy dead bird. Anyway, time for the main event. Time to slice up the turkey breast. I don't think people realize that slicing anything for me while filming it is very complicated because the camera is on my left and I have to use my left hand to hold down the meat and then it blocks your view. So I try to not do that. That's why I cut so weirdly on camera. And then I want you to see the meat and it's really hot so I'm trying to do that while not burning my fingers but anyway hopefully everything looks great and it's worth the shot. That breast was cooked to perfection and it's lovely and juicy. I also realized that with the wet brine turkey I didn't slice into the dark meat and show you the cross section. So I don't want to make that same mistake so we're going to cut into the thigh and the drum and let you enjoy those beautiful images of succulent and juicy turkey. So enjoy the carving and the little montage of turkey food pawn that follows. It's a good thing I said food because if I said turkey pawn that would be extremely disturbing. Anyway folks, uh, enjoy and then we'll taste this bad bird. We'll taste test this bad bird. All right, folks, it's time to taste the dry brine turkey. And yeah, looks really good. I'm excited to dig in. Let's start with the white meat, the breast. Mm. It is soft like butter. Maybe that's why they call it butterball turkey. Mm. Okay, so. Mm. Right off the bat, the skin on the breast is much better on this dry brine than it is on the wet brine. Yeah, it is better. I still feel like putting that butter underneath the breast skin will make it even crisper but I also got to remember that this bird is like been sitting out for a while now because I've been taking photos and stuff but I think the skin is better on this one for sure. The meat is just as tender but it's not as juicy I guess. You know it's not like oozing liquid not that the other one was oozing liquid but like it's a very minor difference like the meat is tender the meat is good. Let's try some of the dark meat gonna go in for the thigh. Mmm. Oh yeah. Mmm. 
and now the leg meat the leg meat is the king yesterday and today I think the, the turkey leg meat the drum the eat like a king drum is my favorite part mmm it's really good overall was it worth a hundred dollars I'll share my thoughts with you all right folks so it's time for the final verdict the hundred dollar turkey was it worth it was the wet brine better was the dry brine better here are my final thoughts so first of all that turkey has fed my family now for a couple of days I ate some of it three days in a row my parents had it twice for dinner my wife has had it three days for dinner as well there's still turkey left we've got bones with meat on it we've got the scraps or not scraps I don't know why I'm calling them scraps but like the shredded meat from the carcass in the freezer I've got a whole box of stock so that hundred dollars has gone a long long way to be very honest if the four of us were to go out and have a meal in a reasonably fancy restaurant not even reasonably fancy in a normal restaurant these days you'd spend 4000 Indian rupees which is nearly $50 so a hundred dollar turkey that's fed us for what 10 meals and maybe two more 12 meals I can make my peace with that I definitely feel like it was money well spent and I definitely think that the meat thermometer was the best investment that my wife has made uh, and that ensured that it was cooked perfectly it didn't matter whether it was wet brined or dry brined honestly both of them uh, have their pros and cons but the difference is like minute I'll say this and I said it in the earlier tasting the wet brine the turkey feels more wet <laughs> and in the dry brine it feels more dry but frankly when you eat it with gravy and side dishes it, it doesn't matter like unless you are planning to eat the turkey just as it is without any gravy or cranberry sauce or mashed potatoes or green beans or anything else on the side it doesn't matter when you shred it and put it into sandwiches it doesn't matter in fact by day three or in fact by the next day itself I couldn't tell which piece was the dry brined one and which was the wet brined one at least not from the meat the only thing that sort of told me that this is the wet brine versus dry brine was the skin on the dry brine one the skin had become wafer thin on the wet brine one the skin was still plump so in my opinion do whichever one is easier for you if you're cooking a whole bird and it's easier to just put it into a wet brine go for it for me I think I would normally do a dry brine because I can just slice up the bird you know season it and leave it overnight I enjoy doing that more and it takes up less space in the fridge I feel but yeah that's my verdict hundred dollars it was worth it yes I know I could get it for ten dollars but I live in India nobody sending me a butterball turkey for ten dollars or any other brand for that matter and I would rather pay double for this than buy a local bird which is not going to taste even half as good but you know what I'm sure at some point I'll buy a local bird and see if I can make it taste better and I hope you enjoyed this series of mine if you did please hit the thumbs up button until the next video cheers and keep eating